Hi, this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and this is Florida Natural Farming. Today I'm going to do a video on jackfruit. I'm going to look at my seedlings, the uh, Theobroma bicolor, uh, Patakshti, the uh, white chocolate, white cacao uh, seeds I bought from Fruit Lovers Nursery. It started germinating, I'm so excited about that. And uh, I'm going to look at uh, jackfruit mostly probably some mangoes and stuff. So I'm standing in front of this little uh, uh, grafted jackfruit tree that all this time I thought it was a yellow variety jackfruit until I opened the fruit today. I guess it was yellow because the fruit I had was from the winter and uh, I just, you know, it's this whole tropical fruit thing is new to me basically because I've only been growing for 13 years and I'm still learning uh, the you know picking and ripening and all that stuff uh, it's a long process it's a generational process and this little jackfruit I don't know what type it is but it's an orange small low latex crunchy variety of jackfruit and the fruit was the best jackfruit I've ever had today and uh, that's the remains of it and we dry farm everything so that does affect fruit flavor uh, it's known to affect fruit flavor and uh, we're going through a sp fairly strong drought p period at the moment uh, it's always happens this time of year it's nothing new uh, so I know what to expect from these trees they drop a lot of their leaves uh, and then they, uh, when, when it rains, they start growing new leaves. But uh, just as exercise is needed for us for cell rejuvenation and mitochondria health, plants don't have the ability to exercise, so they rely on the environment to uh, trigger their uh mitochondria and their cellular function and their cellular immune ability that's just how, how i feel uh the mitochondria of plants have 1200 proteins or you know 1100 to 14, 1400 proteins in the mitochondria or no 1.4 million proteins whereas we have 1200 proteins in our mitochondria and uh, their uh, enzymes and uh, that are responsible for uh, cellular energy and uh, signaling and uh, mitochondria function. And uh, this tree, this little tree has been producing fruit every month this year. And the fruits are very small. And uh, it's a, such a good variety. I have somebody that wants the seeds, so I can't sell any seeds that are already spoken for of this. Uh, of course, they wanted it when it was a yellow crunchy variety, but my bad. It's an orange, amber-colored flat fruit. It's uh, it's the picture I did, and it's such a good jackfruit. I mean, just super delicious, unbelievably delicious. So everything's looking kind of peaked here, and uh, I... A lot of people get discouraged when their leaves, their plants start looking bad, but uh, they need to go through this process for cellular rejuvenation. So uh, just as uh, exercise or cold bath plunges create uh, more white blood cells, um, drought and heat or cold or insect pressure creates a metabolic response in plants. We just don't let ourselves get to the point. I see the creatures are like destroying this tree, trying to get all the fruit off of it. Um, I need to chop that branch off. That's the problem with uh, <laughs> the creatures. They will destroy a tree trying to get the fruit off my little sapodilla tree. Uh, it's not even ripe yet. Um, so, uh, it's going to be an excellent mango year. This is that uh, fruit punch tree that I showed had the worst powdery mildew I've ever seen on a mango. And uh, it's got plenty of fruit on it. But 
Uh, it's, uh, we focus on soil health here and uh, we dry farm, which is soil health, I believe. Uh, because when you're using uh, calcium carbonate infused water and then it dries out, it turns into sand and nutrients can't fl flow through it. And our well water is calcium carbonate infused. So uh, it will turn your sand that's compacted into cement. So nutrients can't even move through it. So uh, the ground is very hard here. And uh, right now, this is like a rock, this, this mowed path and I can't even put, put a stick in it. So it's like when it gets wet, it's more soft, but when it's dry like this, it dries rock hard. Nutrients or biology can't move through it when it's compacted. So this is our, our koi muck tree. It's a relative of the jackfruit. And this is a grafted tree from Excalibur I bought years ago. It's about eight years old. It was planted as a tiny little stick about that big, you know, 10 inches, a uh, grafted tree. And I just planted it right here and walked away. I didn't water it because I don't water plants when I plant them. And after we were here for about two years, my partner freaked out. I used to do what everyone else did and put wood chips around everything. And uh, it just wasn't doing anything. Nothing was working. So he, we put a well in. Uh, artesian flow well that's calcium carbonate infused and we started uh, drip irrigation on our grafted trees uh, from our artesian source so no energy was required it automatically pumped out of the ground and uh, watered the trees when I turned it on and uh, it ended up killing a lot of our rolinia trees like a hundred rolinia trees and uh, due to the high pH water that uh, the tree does, didn't want. Uh, so it, it couldn't convert the, these soil microbes could not convert the rhizosphere into a acid. It was just too much uh, high pH water. So the, the relinias all died and then our, our bananas started getting fungal issues. So I told my partner we're going to stop watering. We did that for about nine months. And um, we stopped and I said, just bear with me. And uh, the trees can handle drought. I mean, that's how trees have evolved. Most areas, almost all areas go through some type of drought. So to think that trees cannot handle being without water, especially mangoes, is just insane. Um, and so I said, bear with me and uh, we will be okay. And so the first year that we did it after we had turned on the water, that's a remnant of our uh, water system here, that PEX pipe. Um, we have water distributed throughout the, the whole farm. I could water if I wanted, but I don't need to. We've been through it and it's unnecessary and it affects the flavor of the fruit and it hurts the biology of the system. And the chance uh, that the water being polluted is, I mean, it's possible. So I don't know for sure. I drink the water here. I do filter it very well. And um, it's, uh, we don't water, we don't have to water. So I don't let the, uh, the trees dropping leaves like the jackfruit, like this jackfruit. This is a seedling jackfruit and it's got fruit on it. I have not tasted this fruit uh, before. And so many people would just get freaked out by seeing this, thinking, oh my God, the tree is going to die. But I know the tree is not going to die. Uh, sure, we might lose some young fruit. Um, but this fruit is this color because they set in the winter. It's totally fine. And uh, it still has flowers on it. So uh, hopefully we'll get some rain. Uh, but I know that the tree is not going to die. It's the abiotic stress boosts the plant's immune system. So you need it. And we focus on not uh, using pollutants to fertilize our plants. So we use miniature zebu uh, cows and uh, we raise them here. And uh, I have my little bowl Romy tied up. Uh, it's a buttercream mango. It's gonna be an excellent mango year excellent mango year um very late though which is extremely odd uh so uh 
We use the Ziva manure, that's all we use. We're basically a closed loop system, though we do buy hay, coastal hay, that we use to put in the barn and uh, feed our cows when we lock them in at night. And, you know, of course I give them a little flake when I take them out to lure them out to the pasture. Because my zebus would like to sit inside the barn and be fed all day long and scratched and coogee wooed, you know? They just like, they're like people. They want to be couch potatoes. But it's not healthy for them, so I make them go out on pasture and uh, I lure them out there with a little bit of hay and then lock them out. <coughs> and uh, then we use that coastal Bermuda hay when we clean out the barn every day uh, to uh, our, as our organic fertilizers here. And I apply it daily, year round, small amounts. Basically it's small compost piles I apply daily. There's rules against applying fresh manure when you sell fruit to the public. You have to wait 120 days, so like five months. Is it five months? Five times three, no, four months. And um, so it's like I do pay attention to those uh, laws, rules. <clears throat> this is that uh, Frank's mother's mulberry, and unfortunately the creatures have been getting every single fruit off this. That's the one the nice thing about the jackfruit. The creatures don't get it. My Rolinia trees look haggard. The Rolinia has probably needed supplemental water to produce fruit, would be my guess. But I know eventually that they're going to do it, uh, maybe this year. There's two left. These are the only two I never watered. Those are the only two that survived. They will look like this every year at the end of uh, the dry season. This is how they look, or after winter because they can lose their leaves with winter. So this is nothing to worry about when you dry farm. Uh, it's, I like to show this stuff because people just don't know and nobody's ever talked about it. And just the fact that it took me 13 years from listening to other people's advice on when to pick black sapote uh, that was wrong and the black sapote has such a bad reputation of being a mediocre, tasteless, unsweet fruit because we pick it when it isn't ripe and it's a type of fruit that cannot ripen. Sure, it can get soft, but it can't ripen. So some fruits can't ripen after you pick them. Mangoes can, Garcinias can't, black sapote can't. Yes, it will get soft, but being soft is not tree ripened. So the sweetness comes on black sapote when you leave it on the tree until it's ripe. And since most people grow for home garden, I'm glad I, I discovered that and am t being able to tell people this now. In fact, I see one here that looks like it's ripe. Ah, yes, it is perfectly ripe. This is a black beauty black sapote and uh, that's when you pick them, when they're ripe on the tree and they're so sweet sweet and creamy and delicious. My partner loves them. He used to hate black sapote. I'm glad we finally figured it out. It's just amazing fruit and how obvious is it that you wait to pick the fruit until it's ripe on the tree but yet that's not what everyone's taught. Everyone's taught to lift pick it when it's green and the top lifts off that little part on the top this part, as soon as you can see uh, underneath, like there, my f finger underneath it, then you pick it when it's green. But then the fruit is not sweet and it's tasteless. Whereas if you wait until it's at this point, then the fruit is delicious, creamy, and flavorful. Delicious, top tier fruit, definitely. I like it better than white sapote. I like white sapote, but black sapote, there's something to it. I don't know if it's the black uh, pigment or what, but there's something in it that just makes you feel good. But you can only eat one of these. Uh, they're so sweet. It's like eating four sapodillas, small sapodillas. It's just too much. It's just too rich. So... Half of one of these is probably sufficient for anybody. Mm -hmm. So I got lots of little uh, seedling jackfruits planted here and there. 
So yeah, that's my whole thing on uh, people's, what they know about growing. It seems like we don't really know what we're doing when we grow. And that's why I do these videos, because I'm learning, I wanna know. This is a jackfruit ceiling that is gonna be just fine. It's got new growth at the top. It's gonna get rid of all those leaves as soon as it starts raining or before it. But that's called uh, getting rid of old cells and rejuvenating cells with stress. It causes cellular rejuvenation. The drought, it's much like humans and intermittent fasting. We need a certain amount of stress in order for our, our meta metabolic system to work. And in plants, it's drought is one of those metabolic uh, triggers. <clears throat> There's a little Koimak tree seedling. It looks totally fine. Koimak seems unaffected by the drought. In fact, it sets more fruit when it's drought. Uh, cashew doesn't set fruit during drought. I'm talking dry farmed. What dry farmed system and a irrigated system are completely different. So what applies to an irrigated system where they're applying, uh, especially when you're applying nitrogen fertilizers, because you have to irrigate, what applies to them is pretty much the complete opposite of what, what applies to us. So in an in a irrigated system, the rainy season is too much for the cashew to set fruit. So they tell you that during the rainy season, they will not set fruit, which is not the case with us. During the rainy season, of course, they also say you can't even grow it up here. So uh, it's just bizarre, but we've made uh, super strong, resilient plants that have not dam been damaged. Their mitochondria has not been damaged. Mitochondrial damage can uh, uh, create a plant that I see my little bull is like pulling on his little tree. Mitochondria damage can affect a plant's ability to uh, synthesize proteins for energy. So its ability for it to create uh, or get the enzymes for its mitochondria, you know, 1.4 million uh, proteins, enzymes are a protein. Uh, and they're needed for metabolic processes. So all uh, ATP energy in the cell, on the cellular level. Here's a, a chimpajack tree that lost all of its lower leaves because it got cold damage during the winter, but it seems totally unaffected by the, uh, the drought. Totally unaffected, unlike that other little jackfruit seedling. <clears throat> so, The enzymes, enzymes, 1.4 of them uh, in the mitochondria of plants. Uh, and enzymes are uh, byproducts of bacteria. So they're like bacterial poop. And enzymes you need for metabolic functions, for energy, for energy, for any of the processes, for photosynthesis, for uh, handling abiotic stress, for uh, handling, uh, you know, drought, for handling cold, for handling wind, for handling um, pollutants. But pollutants also damage mitochondria. So when you're fertilizing with uh, industrial fertilizers like uh, MPK, uh, they're full of... Uh, they can be full of heavy metals and um, forever chemicals and a lot of other pollutants, but they also replace the job of the bacteria endophytes that create the enzymes that the plant needs in order for it to function, uh, have a healthy metabolic function of it on the cellular level. So they cause mutagenic changes to the mitochondria that affects the plant's ability to uh, photosynthesize, to handle abiotic stress. So uh, other things that do that is if we're applying uh, micronutrients, um, micronutrients, mind micronutrients are high in heavy metals. Heavy metals cause mitochondria mutations. So uh, 
they also damage uh, soil biology. When you're putting uh, plastic over the soil in the, in the form of shade cloth, that damages biology of the soil, which in turn will limit your plant's uh, ability to form the relationships with the biology in the soil that will provide the uh, enzymes the plant needs for cellular function. And this is why we've got and pesticides, especially like they use in citrus, the pesticides, fungicides, herbicides, and chemical fertilizers they use in citrus. And then their practice of mowing with machinery uh, just creates a, a tree that has zero ability to handle any type of abiotic stress. So it can only live for 15 years when it should be living to be uh, 100. Anyway, I'm over here at my seeds. I've been starting little seeds in these pots and I did a bunch of uh, Elama seeds in here. None of them took. And then I did some little citrus. I got some seeds from Virginia fruit uh, grower. And uh, uh, so uh, Clementino Rubino and his uh, ginger lime uh, citrus right here. And then I got a blood orange seed I put in here from a, a navel orange. You know, navel oranges are seedless, but you can find seeds in the organic fruit. And our citrus doesn't get green in here. It doesn't get green because we don't sterilize the seeds before we plant them. We dust them with compost. We start them in compost that we make here. Uh, we don't use sterilized water. And uh, we only leave them in the, in the pot for a short, brief period. So this is drought stress on a citrus. But this citrus will, as soon as it gets some rain or if it had more moisture in the air, it would perk up in the morning, but it's been very dry even at night, which is extremely odd. And um, it's nothing to worry about. What I, trees I, do, I noticed don't, are not affected at all by a drought are the Garcinias. But the Achachiro has been historically grown uh, in, by indigenous people in Bolivia because it's the Bolivian mangosteen and they grow it on a commercial scale, but their modality of growing it is on natural. So a natural grow system to grow Achachiro. Only us Westerners, uh, European descent Westerners have uh, think that we know more than the indigenous people that have perfected the achachiro and given it to us uh, kindly. And so we grow naturally and uh, achachiro does just fine growing naturally in Florida, no stress whatsoever, but it does need a certain amount of stress in order to, 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 to create a strong plant. Uh, so here's some seeds I just planted recently, and this is a uh, Tilicia melococcus oliviformis. These came from Bellamy. And then I've done some Anona cariaceae. My friend Troy Jackson on uh, YouTube uh, lives down in Loxahatchee. He uh, uh, has a food forest he's growing down there. Has bought seeds from me, a uh, super smart soils, soils guy. And uh, he uh, turned me on to the Anona cariaceae, and uh, I just felt a little burned after I uh, planted my Ilama seeds and none of, none of them came up. Uh, that's the chance you take with seeds. But I do see that my cariaceae, one of them is coming up, and so I'm hoping that more come up here. And then I have sold seeds where they have not uh, germinated. It's just, that's the how it is with seeds. You don't know. I don't know if it's creatures getting them because squirrels have gotten in those pots or if the seeds just didn't germinate. But that's the chance you take with seeds. I don't give guarantees on seeds that I sell here. I just don't. I sell fresh seeds. I, there's no other intent involved. I'm not trying to get rid of old stock or anything like that. It's just there's too many things that can go wrong when you're starting a plant from seed. So this is where I planted my little cacao. And uh, this is our cacao that's produced. It's produced 30 pods this year. I just had a brilliant guy here from uh, Gavin from uh, Jupiter Farms. And he's interested in getting some zebu, which I find great. Super smart guy from uh, Jupiter and was a graduate at University of Florida. I thought I had something against University of Florida, probably because I, I 
get mad at them because they provide these horrible nutrient recommendations for the home gardener and then they're they're akin to nutrient recommendations that you give a nursery a commercial industrial nursery and that's not how home gardening should be and so i have a problem with their nutrient recommendations their nitrogen especially at the university of florida nothing against the university of florida i think a lot of the people there are brilliant i think the school is great what i have a problem with is their home gardening uh recommendations on how to grow in fact i figured out the banana recommendation of uh, nitrogen just on nitrogen because biodynamics we used to be biodynamics certified and biodynamics makes makes you to become certified figure out how much nitrogen per acre per year you apply in nitrogen in the form of compost or manure or whatever uh and so i figured it out and we applied 29 pounds of nitrogen here per acre per year it hasn't changed maybe five pounds uh, plus or minus and then uh there they allow you to to apply up to 85 pounds of nitrogen so in the form of uh purchased uh manures from another farm that you make biodynamic compost out of we're no longer biodynamic certified but we were organic certified and biodynamic certified that's why i know this so they apply you to purchase so i ha I, I get 29 on farm uh nitrogen which i feel is sufficient because all plants have the ability to uh to make their own nitrogen from air uh they're all nitrogen fixers all plants are nitrogen fixing it just depends on how healthy your system is and uh, the mitochondria is involved in the nitrogen fixation just as is involved in the photosynthesis uh, process synthesis uh, and so there's a big difference 85 to 29 you know I didn't need feel the need to purchase any more nitrogen to get up to 85 pounds and I sure as heck didn't want to buy somebody else's manure that from an industrial source just to bring pollutants onto the farm so I said no thanks but I figured out the, and we had five uh, miniature zebu and two donkeys to get that 29 pounds of nitrogen. So I figured out to get up to the nitrogen recommendations for the home gardener that University of Florida gave for bananas, I think is what it was. I had to have, it was like more than 200 pounds of nitrogen per acre. And for me to get up to the, the I forget the exact number, but you, you get the ideas. To, for me to get up to the 200 pounds of nitrogen that they suggest to apply on the bananas, I would have to have 44 zebus and 12 donkeys in order to create that nitrogen in the form of manure, which would create a CAFO here which creates a whole host of other problems, which is why Florida has a major nutrient problem. That in combination with the fact that we are one in three houses on septics in Florida. So that's why I have an issue with University of Florida. They need to do an about face on that and, uh, and rethink what they're telling people is okay. It's not okay and it's unnecessary. So. We got about 30 fruit off this cacao, sorry. I just had to get that out, but uh, the guy that was here just made me think. He was a, you know, went to University of Florida, a young guy, so he recently graduated. It wasn't that long ago, within the last 10 years. And I thought I didn't like University of Florida, which is not true. I just have an issue with that, but it's because the knowledge has moved beyond what they're teaching, and that's why I feel like they need to do an about face. Dr. James White, didn't he go to University of Florida? He's the most brilliant person I know. Maybe he didn't. I'm just saying, I thought he did. I know he worked for University of Florida. So here's my cacao. And <laughs> I got a bunch started in here and they're finally popping up um, right here. And they look good. And some of them aren't popping up yet, but these have been in, the, in here for more than a month. So. Uh, I do not water them and I do not keep them moist. I water them with rainwater, one little scoop of rainwater, like a, two cups for a pot this size. I don't come over here multiple times and water throughout the day and see if it's dry. That could be people's problems. Usually if something is not growing, it's the result of me, something I have done. And I'm sure that's the case with other people. So. 
I wanted to try my uh, YouTube subscriber friend, uh, Julian Ryan. He has a good YouTube channel. Uh, uh, I don't get a chance to watch everyone's YouTubes. I just can't keep up with everything. Uh, and I uh, sometimes I'm just into something else like molecular biology and metabolic pot processes and mitochondria and stuff like that. So that absorbs a lot of my time. But sometimes I just don't feel like thinking. So. I, I, he turned me on to white uh, cacao, the uh, Theobrahma bicolor. And Fruit Lovers Nursery said you need to keep these at, at 85 degrees constant during the day and the low is 75. Well, I was like, well, they need to learn how to handle cold because we're way up here in Vero Beach where you're not even supposed to be able to grow cacao and or cashew or a bunch of other stuff, jackfruit and and uh, star apples and a lot of other stuff that we have been growing here for a long time, mangosteen, uh, other things. But uh, it's been 50 degrees at night for weeks on end and these things popped up. There's popping up right there. So that was not true, just as it's not true that the cacao can't grow here and can't be dry farmed. And this is how cacao looks after it's the end of winter. I have talked about this and I'm showing it now. People freak out. This is how it looks. This is how it gets cellular mitochondria rejuvenation. It's good for the metabolism of the plant, just as exercise or cold baths or uh, red light therapy is good for humans. Uh, heat and cold is good for our metabolism. That's how they, ex and the exercise is good for our metabolism. This is plant exercise brought to you by nature. It's, they've perfected it. And if that wasn't the case, we would never get fruit off here. But this is a seed grown tree that I started correctly from a fruit tree that I, fr I, I dry farmed in Brevard County that still produces fruit, I believe. And it still has a couple of fruit on there. Just a couple, it had 30 fruit on it, but it looks good. <clears throat> My Keppel tree survived the winter. That was a tree that wasn't supposed to be able to survive and it's looking really good. It's gotten quite large. I'm very excited about Keppel's one, one tree I wanted to grow and our durian are looking great. Um, no problem. Uh, the one that really surprised me was the Pulisan at Ultra Tropical, but it sent off this new growth during winter right here, and it sees no problem with drought. Uh, my friend Frank, because I gave him some cacao seedlings from my last batch that I started, some Criollo cacao, and uh, I gave him some seeds, and uh, he, uh, you know, he, you remove the soil when you plant your, your seedlings. And so that's what he did. And then he's like, oh, my seedlings, they never lost leaves. Yeah, my seedlings don't lose leaves either, sometimes. But uh, the smaller the tree, the less likely it is to lose leaves. So um, and during drought system. So here's, here's one right here, in fact. Has all its leaves, has new leaves. Uh, it's just... When they get older, they function differently than seedlings. Here's another durian. So I have a coffee tree. Looks good right here. Uh, there's another cacao right there, a little seedling. We have about 100 cacao. Hopefully I'm going to be up to 200 cacao. And now I have the, uh, the uh, Theobroma bicolor. Here's my um, uh, Poyuteria... Macrocarpa I planted in here and I planted my little uh, seed I got from my friend uh, Aaron Adams in Vermont uh, of the cutie, but I don't see it coming up yet. But here's some little cacao coming up. The seeds all germinate. <clears throat> you got to grow them in compost. You can't be growing them in uh, a sterile potting medium like they suggest. That's why all this information, uh, I mean, if they got something so wrong about when to pick uh, a black sapote, how in the hell are they going to get something right about how plants' metabolism work? It's just so under, unstudied. So I just want to know. I want to know and I need to see proof. That's why I do these videos because everything, it seems, that I've learned 
uh, uh, or heard how to grow things has been wrong. <clears throat> what I thought I understood, I didn't. And I probably am going to change my mind again. I'm still learning. It's, it's just the best way to grow is to grow as close to natural as possible. And that starts with biology. So you can't have a sterile potting medium. You got to inoculate your seeds. You don't remove the seed membrane. You uh, put compost that's been uh, made well or preferably uh, holistically grown manure is ideal. Uh, you can't get a better input than uh, straight up raw cow manure for growing plants. But not the industrial uh, animals, raised animals that we do today where we worm everything and uh, we feed them glyphosate ready corn and stuff like that. Uh, so you, you don't want to do that. You don't want to use that manure. Um, black cow, sure it'll work, but are you going to get a perfect uh, microbial system? Uh, using it? Probably not. Probably not. So we do sell zebu manure. I sell it, I forget what it was. It was like, that's <sighs> scary. It's like if you come by here, I usually give it away. But uh, um, I, if I have to ship it, I charge. So it's expensive. It's like 15 bucks for a box of manure. Uh, shipping's gone up so much, so it's it's not really worth it to. Uh, so it's like 25 bucks for a large box of zebu manure, holistically grown zebu manure. So here's our our uh, garcinias. These garcinias, as you can see, they show zero drought stress, but there is a little bit going on because I see a lot of leaf drop underneath this male tree, and those little trees look like there's a little drought stress going on. This Brasiliensis has zero drought, drought stress whatsoever. I don't see any leaves under it, and it's got a lot of fruit on it. Uh, I'm so glad we decided to be a Garcinia farm because they seem to be a tree that's perfectly suited for uh, growing uh, in Florida, including Garcinia mangostana, which is not cold sensitive at all here. So all that information is because of the way you're growing. If you're growing with chemicals, your tree cannot adjust its metabolism to provide an immune response to combat uh, drought or freeze stress. That's why. And that's why they say they succumb at 50 degrees. That wasn't the case with ours. In fact, they've put off new leaves. I, uh, Mangostana grows just like these. This, this female tree looks a little drought stressed and I hope it doesn't drop its fruit. This is uh, Garcinia syllabica and um, it's got a lot of fruit on it and probably if it, uh, if it uh, had more rain the fruit would be would be a lot bigger um, but this is the first year it's fruited and this tree, you know, I planted it out here in full sun. This was in full sun always. It's still in full sun. Sure, it's got a branch up there, but it's in full hot sun. You can see the grass is all dead and it doesn't get watered, but I gave it some uh, uh, daily compost from when we cleaned out our barn, which is a prebiotic and a probiotic at the same time, the hay with the manure. Um, so I wish I would have put more around it. It probably would have produced more fruit. Uh, giving them more com daily compost uh, equates into better fruit production on all fruit trees here. So the more zebu and manure and hay that you could give a fruit tree seems to be, I don't think there is a uh, too much. I think you could probably stack zebu manure uh, a foot deep here and uh, the tree would survive and be and thrive because I have done cuttings of these fruit trees in pure rehydrated uh, miniature zebu manure holistically grown and and they've uh, they've uh, rooted so uh, there's something to the miniature zebu which is why it's so uh, praised in uh, Hindustan and uh, they're just like the most important little creatures of our farm and I love them so much. Um, I can't say enough good things. Here's a, a seedling jackfruit. There's a seedling cashew. Here's an achachiro. Here's our Garcinia madruno. 
I cannot say enough good things about the miniature zebu. They're just stars of the farm. Here's a, this thing has lots of fruit on it and there's no leaf drop underneath it. Yep. This is a celebica. You think that they, everyone's, that's the one they say is the most drought tolerant. I think they're all about the same drought tolerant. Their location affects their uh, drought tolerant. I haven't been able to notice any difference in the uh, Garcinias between species. Uh, they're all the same. Maybe the Garcinia living stone AI is a little more drought tolerant than the rest and cold tolerant, but all the rest seem to be a, pretty much identical. So this is a jackfruit tree, an orange crust jackfruit tree. It's got a lot of fruit on it and it shows a little bit of uh, drought stress. So this tree is a grafted tree and I wanted to see if I could tie my bowl up to it and see if it would start producing fruit. I've done a lot of videos of this. My little bowl Romy, uh, Pepsi's calf, and it started producing fruit and now it has fruit all over it. And it looks like this particular fruit uh, is succumbed, but um, there's plenty of other fruit on it and it doesn't look like it's going to succumb. And uh, that's, just, that's just how it is. This is that ginger that, this is drought stress. Being grown next to this path severely affects it. So this is a seedling uh, jackfruit. This is our daily compost. I gave it an extra pile because it was looking very stressed and I wanted it to look better. So um, here's another male uh, Garcinia hombromiana tree. It looks drought stressed, but it has a trail all the way around it. Compaction is the worst enemy here on the farm. <clears throat> it is. It has flowers though. I'm gonna go look at, there's a female uh, Garcinia living stony eye, uh, uh, monoecious tree covered in fruit, little tree. And then I have a little cacao in here. I kind of trying to see them on the fly. I have Luke's Garcinias in here. And you know, the Garcinias, they are unaffected by drought, all of them. Luke's Garcinia, Yapon Holly, mangoes. Mangoes are unaffected by drought. If they're being affected by drought, it's because you made them water. Uh, they need water because, because of how they've been raised. So their metabolism isn't working correctly. That's the only reason. Here's a Garcinia living stony eye, uh, female tree, monoecious tree, covered in fruit, covered. We have three of these female monoecious trees. That's why we're gonna be able to lower the price of our uh, Garcinia living stony eye this year to probably $3 each. Uh, we were up to $5 at one point, but because of all the fruit production we're getting now off these trees, and now that we have two more trees that have come into production, um, we're able to drop the price. So here's some cacao. This one didn't lose its leaves, but this one did, but it's going to survive. This tree is not going to die. It's going to, as soon as I was showing this so that I can show it when it starts raining, uh, all covered in leaves. So people can freak out, oh my God, you don't take care of your trees. No, the trees don't need me to take care of them. We focus on the microbiology, which creates a uh, mitochondria that can uh, provide an immune response to uh, abiotic and biotic stress. There's a little cacao seedling. There's a cacao seedling that didn't lose any leaves. That's what I mean. It's like to say one thing causes this when it's obvious location, location, location with plants. Um, just depends on the plant. Also, when you grow organically and biologically, everything is different. All plants are different. I'm going to look at the mangostana since I talked about it. There's my little boy, Romy. He's getting his grass. Hi, honey. He's so cute. Oh. 26 inches tall at a year and a half. Just a little darling boy. He's like a little dog boy. They're just amazing. Uh, his little sister, his full sister, uh, Pina, is the cutest little, most beautiful spotted baby ever from this year. I'm not sure who this is, but this is a seven month old, 20 inch tall. It's either a Lindero or a Mangostana. 
but I think it's Lindero. Uh, here's a Garcinia uh, Amazona, Amazonica giant. And here's a Garcinia Mangostana from seed, 20 inches tall in eight months, direct sown, never been watered. Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't see my Garcinia my Garcinias that I planted there coming up. A red flowered a red fruited one from Asia, from Indonesia. Labigata? What's what is it? I can't think of it right now. My brain isn't totally working perfectly. But anyway, here's my Plutonia and Cygnus. It looks totally great. The, the curry is supposed to be an incredible fruit. I'm just really excited about that fruit. <clears throat> Anyway, I'm Eric. This is Florida Natural Farming at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. Happy Earth Day. I think I said it was four days ago, but I'm pretty sure it's today. Uh, take care of Florida and um, don't over apply nutrients and don't overthink your uh, gardening. Uh, remove yourself. If you're in doubt, remove yourself. Uh, usually when that happens, the trees respond on their own um, and can survive. You'd be surprised what we can do in Florida. It's called Florida for a reason. Everything grows here. It's the most biodiverse spot in North America right here uh, on the Indian River Lagoon. Have an excellent day. Take care of the earth. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and comment. I love hearing from you. Thanks for watching.